If you like my videos, I save the coolest stuff for the Patreon. You can sign up for 10 bucks and instantly get all of the videos. You can quit whenever you want, of course. I do private tutoring as well. My email is below if anyone is interested. Welcome to the ultimate Unreal Engine C++ series. My name is Ruben Ward. I develop games for a living, and today I'm coming back to recreate one of my most successful video series. So, whether you're doing it for a hobby or you want to make games as a career, this series will be a really nice starting point for learning how to make games in Unreal. I thought I'd just throw in that Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, Fortnite, Gears of War, Paragon, Tekken, Bioshock, and loads of other games were all made using Unreal Engine, and C++ is obviously the main way that the big studios are making these games. Um, blueprints are nice, but you know C++ is really the main tool that uh, big studios use to make games. So I'm going to have a few minutes of slides, don't worry. We will open Unreal Engine up in a few minutes, um, but please don't skip ahead because there's some pretty important stuff that I'm going to explain. This is some stuff about me. You really don't need to read this, but if you want to, you can. Um, these are some things to just keep in mind. Feel free to pause the video and read these. Not too important. And finally, here is some jargon. Now, because there is a lot of confusing words and jargon, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the terms that I use um, in Unreal Engine. So the first one is actor. Now, an actor is something that exists in the level. This could be a house. It could be my player. It could be almost anything. It really doesn't matter as long as it exists in the level. A pawn is a type of actor that includes the ability to be controlled using the keyboard, a controller, a joystick, pretty much anything. And we use one of these whenever we need the actor to be controlled by a player. So we use that for, you know, if you want to fly a spaceship around, we'd use a pawn for that. A character is a type of pawn that is used for vertically oriented players. This could be a human, that's the main reason, but you could use it for like a T-Rex, literally just anything as long as it's vertically oriented. Lastly, the world refers to the massive sandbox that has all of the actors and components in it. Now, I know I haven't talked about what a component is, so um, in a couple of slides I'll also talk about that in a bit as well, so don't worry. Now, Unreal comes with a few types of pawn already included. We have a wheeled vehicle, we have a character, and there's also another one that is good for spectating. I'm sure, you know, your game's going to need some spectating in it at some point, so you can also do that. However, if you need something custom, you can also do that, and in future videos, I plan on showing you guys how to make custom pawns as well. Alright, I know I said I'd talk about components, so lastly, I'll talk about those, and then we can finally open up the engine. I know people probably find these slides super boring, so yeah. Um, components are basically the puzzle pieces that make up actors. So for almost anything you need to do, there will likely be a component that can do it for you, but you can always add custom components if you need. Um, on the screen, I've got a few examples of some different components, so I'd recommend pausing the video and just reading through some of these examples. And that's it for the slides. Let's open up the engine. Okay, so this is what it will show you when you boot up Unreal Engine for the first time. Now, um, I'm assuming that you know how to install Unreal Engine. If you don't, please just look it up. I'm sure it'll be really easy. I don't want to waste too much time. And in all honesty, if you need to be shown how to install Unreal Engine, these videos probably aren't for you because <laughs> they're going to get a bit confusing. But I promise you it's not very hard. Um, you can look it up on Google. Now, when you open it up, you'll be greeted with um, the project browser. What I'm going to do is just click on C++, basic code, and I've called it YouTube. And I'd recommend calling it the same thing as me um, just to avoid any trouble later on. And when you're ready, click on create project. Now, these projects take an absolute age to finish generating, so um, I'll see you guys when mine's finished. Okay, now after a few minutes, your project should be ready, and it'll open up. You might be quite excited to look around the engine, but for now, just click on X, and we're going to go into Visual Studio, which is what we do all the code stuff in. Now, the main thing is that you have the Solution Explorer open. If you do not have this thing here open, the Solution Explorer, you need to go to View, Click on Solution Explorer, and then you are good to go. Um, again, Visual Studio is really simple to install. It's software by Microsoft. So what you want to do is um, I'm going to show you how to actually run it in the debugger. This is the way that I would recommend doing things. Um, so all you need to do is click on the play button, and that's how we're going to be opening the engine up. We want to do it that way. Um, instead of just booting our project straight up, whenever you want to open your project, you simply just click on this play thing here, and that'll open it up instead. You'll also get this little thing here. Just go ahead and click yes to rebuild. So what's happening here is all of the code in our project is being compiled, 
and the result is that it's booting up this editor for us to actually see our project. And you're going to see the exact same thing that we saw before, so it's nothing too exciting. But the this way, if things crash, it'll actually be able to tell you in Visual Studio why they crashed, which is really useful. Um, I would definitely recommend doing it this way. So here we are, we're inside of the engine. Um, the basic controls, if you right click, you can do this, rotate. If you left click, you can sort of pan around. And uh, my favorite's the scroll wheel, you can sort of do that. And if you use a combination of these three, you can sort of get to anywhere that you want to go. So I'd recommend just having a quick play around, just click on some stuff, see what happens. Um, <laughs> we're not going to worry too much about this, we're going to focus on the coding. But uh, yeah, have a play around and just get used to the editor, because we're going to be in here quite a bit. Okay, so let's jog the memory a little bit. You remember I said an actor is anything that exists in the level. So I'm going to click on this chair here, and I have a question for you guys watching. Is this chair an actor? If you said yes, you are correct. It is an actor, right? This table is also an actor. This big thing here is also an actor, and so on. So remember, any object in the level is considered an actor. What we're going to do is we're going to add our first custom actor. Now to do this, you want to click on this little sources panel thing here. Go to your C++ classes folder, and then go into YouTube. And we're going to have one thing already there. This is the game mode. Now, this was automatically made for us with our project. You can ignore it for now, but basically what this game mode does is it's used for setting up the rules for our game. And the rules might be things like, um, is Friendly Fire turned on? Um, how much health does a player have? Just things like that will be defined inside of this game mode. So we're going to add our first custom actor. I'm going to go ahead and right click. New C++ class. We're going to go ahead and click on Actor, click Next, and I'm just going to call it My Actor, doesn't really matter, and then click on Create Class. What this will do is it'll add My Actor inside of Visual Studio. You'll see Visual Studio pop up in a second. So you should see this message here, it's going to ask you to reload some things. Go ahead and click on Reload All, and what that's going to do is reload the files. You can click Yes to stop debugging. And your YouTube project should be loading up over here. You can go ahead and expand it. And if you go into the YouTube folder under Source, you'll see our new My Actor has been added. Now, if you know about C++, which you should if you're watching this, um, C++ is the, the main file, and then we have the header file as well. And you'll notice that there are two functions here. There's a begin play function, and there is a tick function. There's also a constructor here as well. The begin play function is automatically called for you when the game starts. And the tick function is called automatically when a new frame is drawn to the screen. So if there was 60 frames per second, this function would get called 60 times per second. And it's really nice for handling stuff like moving around or anything that you want to do every single frame. So what I'm going to do is... We'll just do something really basic. Um, we'll say that every single tick, let's just move the actor upwards into the air. I'm not going to do anything crazy. We'll just do something really simple just to play around for now. So we're going to make a if vector. A vector is simply a position somewhere in space. And I'm going to call this new location. And we're going to set it equal to the location of my actor. Now to get the location of this actor, because remember, my actor is simply just a custom actor that we're making. So if you want to get the location of your actor, simply type get actor location. That's a function and it will tell you exactly where your actor is. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say new location dot z plus equals 5. Now, there are better ways to do this, but I'm just trying to keep things simple here. So what we're doing is we're getting the location of my custom actor that we've made. We're moving it five units up every time a new frame is drawn on the screen. I'm actually going to change this to one. And the next thing we want to do is we want to set the actor's location. We can simply do set actor location. And we're going to set it to this new location that we've made. This might seem a little bit confusing, but I just want to do something simple, just so I can show you guys um, how this all works. So I'll go ahead and click on Save now. We'll play this. And I'll show you guys how this works over in the 
engine. All right, guys, so we're back in the engine now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my C++ classes, open up YouTube, and here's my actor. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my actor. I'm going to drag it and drop it into the level. Now the problem is, is that you cannot actually see my actor. You remember I talked about components and how components make up our actors? Well, right now, my actor doesn't even have any components at all. So for us to actually be able to see it do anything, we need to add a component. If I hit play, my actor is going to move upwards, but because it doesn't have any components, we're not going to be able to see anything actually happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the engine. I'll just hit don't save. And I'm simply going to add a mesh component to the actor. And this time we'll actually be able to see it. Don't worry about that message, by the way, you won't get that. Okay, so to add a component, what I'm going to do is I'll come over here. I'm going to type use static mesh component. We're going to make a pointer to a static mesh. And I'm just going to call this mesh. Now, for the engine to actually know that this component exists, you need to put U property above it. There are other things such as U function, U enum, U struct, there's different ones, but just know that this is how we tell the engine about this component. If you forget to put U property, the engine will not know that this component exists. That is okay in some cases, but since I want to actually see this and edit it inside of the engine, I need to put U property there. I'm also going to put edit anywhere and this means that I can edit this from inside of the engine which is much easier than actually trying to do it in code. So now that we've made our mesh I'm going to go back to the constructor and the constructor is actually where you create the uh, components. So we're going to say that mesh and this is going to seem quite confusing but just bear with me here. So to create a new component we use this function here called create default sub object. I know that's a lot to take in, but yeah. So to create a new component, we also need to tell it what component we're creating. You remember we made a static mesh, so we're going to go ahead and select that. And finally, in here, we need to give it a name. I'm just going to call it my mesh. And that's all you need to do. So now we have a component. You declare the component inside of here. You go ahead and create the component. And now if I go back into the engine, our actor will actually have a component, and I'll better show you guys that as well. Okay, so I've opened the project back up by clicking on the little play button, and I'm going to drag my actor, just drag it in. And you can see that now, if we go to the details panel here, you can see that there is one component, and it's called mesh. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And because I marked it as editable, we have a whole lot of options down here, and we can change all of these. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to select Static Mesh, and if you scroll down, there's a whole bunch of meshes you can choose from. I'm going to click on this one that's called SM Chair. And now you can see that there's a chair in the level. Now we could play our game, however, the easiest way to see what's happening is to actually click Simulate. If you click the drop down, you can click Simulate. And what Simulate does is it allows you to still have the same perspective that we're in right now, but the game will actually play. So I'm going to go ahead and click the drop down, click on Simulate, and there you have it. My chair is moving into the air. And this is all happening from that logic that I wrote before. Every single time a new frame gets drawn to the screen, it'll move the chair up into the air. So I know that's a super boring example. I know you guys want to see explosions and guns and all that stuff, and we'll get to that eventually. Um, but hopefully this serves as a really simple example of making a custom actor and just making it do something. So yeah, there you have it. I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm going to try and get a little bit more exciting from here. Um, so I'll see you guys in that video.